Yes, the UK is going to hold the world for ransom for one billion pounds. <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> but essentially, this is the new UK plan that we are going to hold the world to ransom for a princely sum of a billion pounds. Now, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about super uh, uh, semiconductors. Probably one of the most important now aspects to modern society. We need chips. We need computer chips. We need all the chips to be able to produce all our modern technology. And especially going forward, these types of industries are massively needed. I mean, at the moment, I think it's something like 80% of the world's um, semiconductors come from Taiwan. And bear in mind, if China invades Taiwan, you're looking at the prospect of then 80% of the world supply of semiconductors coming to a halt very quickly in that eventuality. And this is why you have seen uh, the America pour billions of dollars, billions of dollars, and we'll be getting into their number of what they've uh, pouring into this type of industry. And not only just America, but Europe as well is also pouring billions of euros into doing something very similar. And then Rishi Sunak just goes, Yes, we shall give them one billion pounds. <laughs> and it is absolutely ludicrous that Sunak and all these things since Brexit, oh, we're going to be a science superpower. But if you want to do that, then guess what, guys? You have to put the money forward for it. You cannot just say, we are going to be a science superpower and here's a billion pounds for all the UK science-based industries. Because that is just not enough, as we were about to be finding out. So before we go uh, into more of this and probably more Dr. Evil impressions, <laughs> um, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and one of the link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And of course, um, there's the YouTube thank you button and the Pony Club down below as well. So let's crack on with this. So this comes from The Register with the title of UK PM Sunak plans to allocate just £1 billion to semiconductor industry. The UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is said to be preparing £1 billion of investment for the country's semiconductor industry as chip companies threaten to relocate elsewhere if the sufficient government support is not forthcoming. And bear in mind, this was one of the big things that was sold about Brexit. Oh, if if we do Brexit, then everyone's going to come and, and want to be um, move their business into the UK. Meanwhile, we're not seeing that because we're seeing America pour billions of dollars into investment in not just things like the semiconductor industries, into green technologies, into all kinds of stuff. It's massively investing in it. We've seen European countries do the same along with the EU. And yet here we are not doing that because these idiots that are in charge are free market fundamentalists who are abjectly opposed to the idea of any form of government intervention. So to be honest, the semiconductor industry is lucky even to get a billion quid from Sunak. So the British government has been dragging its heels over a semiconductor strategy for the UK industry with one promised last year ago when Lord Callaghan told the House of Commons that the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport was working on one to be published shortly. And of course, we all know who is in charge of that department. Yes, that was Mad Nadine Doris or Mad Nads, as we like to call her over here. So 
we all know that that strategy was probably never done because she certainly had no interest, let alone probably not even knowing what a semiconductor was. <laughs> now, a report from the news site Politico claims that Sunak will pledge at least £1 billion for the UK semiconductor sector and is expected to unveil a long-awaited national semiconductor, strat semiconductor strategy at next month's G7 summit to be held in Japan. The report cites anonymous sources that have said to have direct knowledge of the matter and says that the newly formed Department of Science, Innovation and Technology, or DITST, <laughs> has published has pushed for a larger amount of funding in the light of the much bulkier sums being allocated to chip companies in other parts of the world. So, as we said at the beginning, and, and you know, and alluded to, every other country is is sort of realizing, of course, this this fact that you know we cannot just rely on eighty percent of the world's source of these highly important components coming from one place in the world. We've got to sort of maybe spread out this um, very important production part of our of our modern society a bit more you know so they're all realizing it and they're all allocating a lot of money like i say a billion pounds is a lot of money but when you think that this is meant to be for all the uk semiconductor industries in the uk it's not a lot of money and we're about to find out just how little money sunak is actually pledging to his science superpower plan. So, in the US, for example, the Biden administration has already well advanced with its plans under the CHIPS Act to distribute $52 billion in subsidies and in other incentives to encourage semiconductor companies to build their fabrication plants there and to boost research into chip technologies and workforce education. And look at that strategy alone. Not only are they going, here's all the money, here's a ton of subsidies, build your factories, build your fabrication. Oh, yeah, we're also going to put a load of stuff into research as well. And oh, by the way, here's a ton of stuff for workforce education as well. What's Sunak done? Here's a billion quid. And bear in mind that estimates, if you want to sort of compare it on a percentage basis, is something like 2% of what the US is spending. So think about that. They are spending two, we are spending 2% of what the US is spending on this. Who do you think is taking this more seriously? Us or America? And of course, the European Union has also just finalized its own plans for the European Chips Act, which has similar goals, which is set to unlock 34 billion euros in funding for the semiconductor industry across Europe, with aims of doubling the current market share of the global chip market represented by European companies. And that, again, that's still 2% when you compare it to what the UK is doing. And that's not even including when you look at stuff that France, Germany, and the Netherlands are also doing. So even if, I think if you were to add that, that would be even a lot more in terms of, of cost of what they're, of what not only the spending that is going on in Europe, in the European Union. And then we get to Japan because Japan as another interesting point here. So Japan is also set to pump 330 billion yen, that's uh, $2.74 billion alone, into just one, one semiconductor company named Rapidus, which aims to develop and mass-produce advanced 2M, 2MN semiconductors. So even though Japan is spending roughly around a similar, well, a bit more than us, to be to be fair, a bit more, but all that money is going into developing one company. <laughs> and of course, the UK, by contrast, 
is claimed that Britain's strategy is more likely to focus on how to scale up existing chip design and manufacturing companies, secure supply chains, and address the skill shortages rather than joining the global subsidy race, which may go some way to explaining this paltry sum. Why? Because you've got an entire group of people whose ideology is purely we cannot spend any government money or subsidies into stuff like this because the, the just that'll be all the, the free markets. Yeah, the, 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 all these private companies will, will do that. Well, what are you seeing? You're seeing millions of these companies going, well, if we go to Europe, we'll get all this money and we'll get all these subsidies. And if we go to America, we'll get all this money, all these subsidies and all this stuff. So if you're a semiconductor company in the UK, are you going to stay in the UK? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There is no single incentive for you to stay in the UK whatsoever. So it continues. The UK does not have a semiconductor industry of any consequence apart from a size point of view and never will have. So there is absolutely no point in announcing tens of billions of pounds in support, said Richard Gordon, the vice president for the semiconductors and electronics at Garter. What, um, so what would we do with it? We're not even going to build high volumes of, of fabs to actually compete with Taiwan, South Korea, or even the US or even China, he added. And according to Gordon, if one billions of one billion pounds in funding is forthcoming, it will most likely be targeted at specialist niche niches and specific points in the semiconductor value chain. In the grand scheme of public spending, a billion is not even a rounding error. We already know that the UK chip strategy will be, uh, it will be cherry picked a few areas where we think we might have some expertise and can claim to be, quote, leading. But which does not require multi-billion pounds of investments to companies uh, to, to to companies to try and compound semi semiconductors, he explained. Whether this will be enough to satisfy the UK-based semiconductor companies is not yet clear. In February, the Register reported that chief exec of several tech startup companies, including Pragmatic Semiconductor, IEQ, and Paragraph, had already expressed frustration with the level of support from the UK government. And it goes into some other stuff talking about the, the people from this company saying, why? Why are we here? When all this stuff going on in Europe, there's all this stuff going on in, in America. Why are we here? But remember, remember, Brexit was sold by Brexiteers who said, oh, you don't understand. If we, if we do Brexit, everyone will come and join us. Or we'll do, we'll get rid of all these uh, burdensome regulations and then they'll all come and, and, and join us. But here's the thing, as we've said many, many times, if we got rid of all these regulations, it would be next to impossible to then trade with the largest market sitting next door. Because half the time, we wouldn't be able to sell those products into the EU because of the rules and regulations, because we're not following them. We are currently sitting at a massive, massive missed opportunities. There is currently the massive green technology revolution going on, and you've got this whole semiconductor um, sort of building spree now being recognized for the importance that they are and, hey, that we sort of need to build these. And what has our government done? Well, here's a bit of money. There you go. Crack on. Good luck. Slow golf cap. Cause yeah. congratulations, Tories. You are missing out on one of the biggest opportunities in the entire world. Everyone in the world is sort of going into this, is doing subsidies, is using government funding to invest in these areas. And yet 
you guys are so ideologically bound that you don't even do that. Because remember during the pandemic, we were doing, um, you know, uh, helping people, making sure that their wages were being paid. You had conservatives coming out saying, Rishi Sunak is showing that socialism works. So ideologically opposed are they to even the slightest idea that the government could give money to these people. And instead, what do we get? When the government does give money to people, it seems to be that they're chums and, and fellow people who then don't spend that money on what they're meant to be spending it on. We saw that during the whole PPE scandal. But, yeah. And, and think of it this way. You said at the start of the beginning, why the Doctor even pressure? Why are we holding the world to, to ransom for, for £1 billion? Pounds? Well, here's the thing. Semiconductors are becoming an incredibly more and more important resource for everything we use in our modern lives, in, in, in everything. And yet, the country that builds most of these uh, sort of technologies and these chips will become incredibly important. And that's why Taiwan produces 80% of them in the world. That's why everyone is recognizing that, oh, if China invades Japan, I'm sorry, no, uh, if, no, sorry, if, if China invades Taiwan, not, not Japan, but if they invade Taiwan, you've got a massive, massive problem there in, in that supply chain. And what could, and I'm not even just talking about the war itself, just the fact that that supply chain could just go like that. 80% of the world's semiconductors. For how long? <laughs> we don't know. But yeah. Um, and, and that's it. And they are desperate, you know, all the time to say, oh, how good we are. Oh, we're going to be a science superpower. But it's all talk. And they don't put their money where the mouth is. Every single time. Every single time. Going all the way back to the ideas of the Northern Powerhouse. Right from the very beginning of the Cameron administration. You know, this, is, this has become the de facto way of all this Tory stuff. Oh yes, we'll, we'll, we'll do this because it sounds really good. And then when it comes to actually giving the money over... It's just a drop in the bucket. I mean, look at, again, you compare the sums of the UK and the, to, to what the UK is spending to, to Europe and, and, and the EU. It's about 2%. And then you look at Japan. Now, Japan is spending a slightly bit more uh, in terms of, I think, that amount of money. But it's not going to all the UK semiconductor industries. For the, the Japanese plan is to build one big brand new sort of company and to establish that. So even then, the Japanese money is highly targeted in a very specific way. What's the UK plan? There's a million pounds. Okay, now what? <laughs> Just... <sighs> mm. So, as always... Thank you very much for watching, and of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.